Hey guys, what's up? I am back again, and this is the second video of the calculator tutorials. While you were gone, I added all the button attributes and stuff, and I'm just going to scroll through them quickly to show you and explain what they do. I will put them in the description so you can copy and paste, or you can just pause and copy it down if you want. Um, basically what I did with each button is right here like add button equals new j button I created the button itself and then set the text so I set the text for the add button to plus then in this next attribute I, I set the size of most of the buttons was were 50 by 50 and then in this button and in this attribute I set the location on the screen basically I have all this figured it out so it looks good um, it usually takes a lot longer than this but I've already done it before. And then I did this for all of the buttons. As you can see, I'm scrolling through. And then I also set attributes for the text field. And I did the same thing. I set the size and the location. I created the J text field. But I also set the font. And I set it to be bigger. I set it to be Arial. And I set it to be a bold font and 24. And I also made it not editable. That way you can't just like enter numbers. You have to like click the buttons to do it. So that's basically the gist of all of that, but they're not actually on the screen yet, so that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. Don't worry, I will put all of this stuff um, in the description, so that way you can copy it down and paste it into your program. So, I already did this, and I'm just going to copy and paste it in right now. And basically what I did is, for each button... I did panel, so it add, and then dot add, which basically adds the object to the panel. So the panel is what we created up here, and we called it panel. We created it up here. See, this is the J panel. It's basically like a place to put stuff. And I added all the buttons on. And then, since this is the constructor, I just did add panel. So I added the panel to the actual frame itself. So now if we run this, and you'll you'll run it after you copy all of this down all of this will be in the description do not worry if we run this it comes up and here's your calculator if you press the buttons nothing happens yet because we haven't created that yet but we will after we do some housekeeping things so just copy and paste all of that stuff down when you're ready and then yeah that's basically it but now we have to add action listeners for everything. So I'm going to pause it and come back. I'm sorry that I'm skipping over most of this, but it would be boring to watch. And it's much easier just to copy it down um, rather than watching it, watching me do it because it's just a waste of video. All right, so I'm going to pause it and be back. Okay, guys, I am back again. And I have added all of the action listeners for the buttons. Basically, this just allows the program to listen not listen like hearing but it like just waits for something to happen like it waits for you to click the button and then it'll execute whatever code you put in but we'll get to that later so basically for all these buttons you can see here I just did add action listener and then I put this in here and this basically refers to this entire class itself actually this method no, the class, sorry. So basically because I implemented action listener up here, if I put this, it's referring to this action listener because this is the class. Okay, so now that we have the um, action listeners for every single button, we can start actually making stuff happen when you click the button. So to do that, we go into this action performed field that we have, our method it's called, I'm sorry, for those of you who will criticize me for that. Um, and basically we named this action event E, you weren't there when I named it, but if it says like arg0 or whatnot, just change it to E, because it's easier to work with. So we're going to use if statements, and we do e.getSource, not sports, source, and we do equals equals zero button it's gonna execute whatever we put in here whenever the zero button is clicked 
So, what we're going to put in here is actually another if statement, because we don't want them to be able to enter like a million numbers, because it won't work. So we're just going to set the length. We're going to do, so if answer field dot get text, so it'll just get the text. Um, and then we do dot length. If the length is less than, less than 16, 16, then it'll enter it. If it isn't, it'll just, it'll just like, uh, Ah, brain fart, I'm sorry. It'll just, if it if it's above 16, it won't let you enter anything more. So, um, we're also going to have another if statement. And if it's if clear field equals equals one, this is just for later. It doesn't really matter now. Then it's going to do answer field whoops, don't put caps lock on, answer field dot set text to zero. And then it's going to set clear field equal to zero. And then we're going to put an else here. And it's going to, if it's not that, it's going to set answer field dot set text and it's going to set the text to whatever is already in there so answer field dot get text so it's going to get the text from this, from the answer field and it's going to set it to that plus zero so it's going to add a zero to the text field so basically if we ran this right now, which I'll do just to show you how it works, we press the zero button, it's going to add zeros, and then once it hits 16, and 16 is the end of the screen, it won't let you enter any more numbers, which is very, very handy, because Java cannot handle numbers over like 300 trillion or whatnot. I am not exactly sure on the amount, but I think it's somewhere around there. So... Now, make sure you're outside of this entire uh, e dot get so uh, this entire if statement right here that I'm hovering over. Make sure you're outside of that because if, so if you click on this, you'll see that it highlights this one, so we know that we're outside of it now. So now we're gonna add the e dot get source for one button. So basically, if the one button is clicked. So again, we're going to do the answer field dot get text. Whoops. Make sure to spell everything right, otherwise it will be bad. Very, very bad. If it's less than 16, then it'll let this stuff happen. And then... Sorry, I have it all printed out so I can see what I did before. Um... And then if the clear field, clear field equals, make sure you put equals equals one. If you just put equals, it won't work because that's for like different types of variables. Uh, make sure you put equals equals because it's an integer. So if clear field equals one, then it's going to set the answer field dot set text and it's going to set it to one. And then it's going to make clear field equal to zero. And then if it's else, if it's not, if clear field is not equal one, then it's just going to do answer field dot set, whoops, dot set text, and it's going to do answer field dot get text. That way it doesn't erase the whole thing. Plus one. So again, we're done with the one button now. Again, make sure you are outside of the entire one button dot get source if statement thingy, majigger. Um, so now we're gonna do it for the two button, of course. So if e dot get source equals equals uh, two button, then it's gonna check again. Link. You know what? Since I'm being lazy today, and I want to make this better for you guys, 
I am going to copy and paste everything and paste it in. But just let me finish this one first. So if clear field equals equals one, then it's going to then it's going to set the text to two. And it's gonna set clear field equal to zero. And then if we have an else here, whoops, make sure you spell it right. If you have an else right here, it's gonna say answer field dot set text answer field dot get text plus two. Alright, I'm going to copy and paste this because this is going to take way too long if I don't. So, I'm just going to copy this whole thing. If I paste it right here, and I set this to 3 button, it's going to set this to 3, and this to 3. Um, I'm probably going to have to continue this into the next tutorial as well because it's going to take a little longer than expected. And then we gotta change this to four button. And then this guy has to go to four. This little guy over here has to go to four. <sighs> okay, now we got we copy and paste it again. We set this to five. 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 I'm trying to finish all these but all of the number buttons before the time runs out. Six. I think I can get there though. Six. I've got two minutes left. Six. Seven. I'm running out of time. Seven. I think I can make it though. Eight. 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 And then nine is the last one. Now I gotta change this to nine. Nine. And nine. Okay, so now we have all the number buttons working. I know that was hard to follow. Just copy and paste it though, like I did, because it'll save you boatloads of time. So now, if we press all these buttons, we can see that they're adding to the screen the numbers that we press. So I will be back in the next tutorial, and we will be adding the clear button and other things that are very useful. So uh, be sure to subscribe and keep tuned. The next video will be up. All right, I'll be back.